Good morning, Redemption Flagstaff. How are we doing? All right, I knew there was some energy out there. Hey, if you are in the foyer, please make your way in. If you're on the live stream, welcome. If you're in here with us, please stand. We are going to lift our voices and praise our God.
we're going to transition into a time of confession. Um, we do this each and every week, not to heap guilt on ourselves, but to remember that Jesus is the reason that we can come before the Father. And it's because of that that we can surrender ourselves to him um, and confess our sins and know that they are forgiven. So as we sing this next song, um, let's keep that in mind and continue worshiping.
Would you all please pray with me? Heavenly Father, as we sing those words, God, I ask that our hearts position um, would ring them as well. God, that we would not just say that we have surrendered, but that we would actually would. God, I, I pray that we would just see that as we hear from your word and continue just to move along in our service today, that um, our wills and our wants would be surrendered to you. Um, we pray that you would do this through your Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, amen. All right. We're going to take just a quick moment to greet one another, so please find somebody that you don't know and introduce yourself. Good morning. Please remain standing for the reading of God's word. My name is O Kim, and today I will be reading Matthew chapter 3, 16 to 17. When Jesus was baptized, he went up immediately from the water. The heavens suddenly opened up for him. He saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and coming down on him. And a voice from heaven said, this is my beloved son, with whom I am very pleased. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Good morning, Redemption Church. How are you guys? Good to see you guys. Curse Lindsay throwing me off, sitting in a different section than normal. Like, uh, <laughs> no. Hey, uh, my name is Anthony. I'm one of the pastors here. I'm thankful to be a pastor here. Uh, hey, we have a little tradition. And I heard last week Kyle purposely didn't do it. <laughs> Honestly, I probably wouldn't have done it this week if he didn't go out of his way not to do it. So uh, the tradition is this. If you're new here, I'm sorry. But uh, we actually have you guys re-greet one, one another. What we've decided is we want the part of the service everyone hates most, we're going to try to do a lot. And it's not just because you hate it. It's because we actually think this is not just something you show up to. We think this is a community, this is a body, this is a family, and it really helps to know each other's names. And so here's what we're going to have you do. We're going to have you re-greet one another. When you re-greet one another, you're actually going to tell the person that you just met, you're going to tell them their name, okay? And then if, uh, if you forgot their name, you just look them in the eye and just say, uh, you didn't leave much of an impression on me. So uh, go ahead and do that now. can bring it back together. We can bring it back together. 
Hope you guys did well. I know, hey, I know that's, sorry, I'm fixing my mic a little bit. That's my bad. Um, hey, I know that uh, can be strange, especially for new people. I know long-time people hate that we do it. But uh, something I hate, and I, I mean that, is so often Sunday gatherings are just treated very similarly to how we treat going to the movies. And that is just not the vision God has for us as, as a body as a gathered body of believers together doing corporate worship on Sundays. And so, so th- that's just one little way we try to disciple that out of us. And so if you hate it, don't worry. I only do it when I think my sermon's going to be shorter than normal. So, um, uh, hey, that being said, one quick uh, announcement before we pray for a little bit. Uh, la- yesterday, our churchwide newsletter uh, went out to everybody's email. So a few things. If you want to sign up for the newsletter, there's a way out there at the Connect Desk to sign up for the newsletter. If you didn't get the newsletter, uh, we would ask, hey, check your spam folders, check your other kinds of folders, look for it and see if it's in there. Because our newsletter is the main way each month that we just get out a bunch of information to you guys. It, we, if, we just, if we did the announcements like we do in the newsletter, our announcement time would be like 10, 15 minutes every week. And so go to your email if you, haven't, if you have signed up, if you're not seeing the newsletter, and double check, see if you have it. If you don't, if you want to sign up for that, stop, stop by the Connect Desk. Uh, if you don't know this, Lindsay Hobbegger, she's our new newsletter and social media director. She's doing a great job. Uh, she, her ask and our ask as a church is as she's been posting lots of posts to try to uh, get kind of the algorithms going so that our church can see more of what's going on in the church is interact with the post, like the post, comment on the post, uh, do all those sorts of things because that will just help us uh, to know how that's working and it will help us to get that stuff out there. I don't know. Lindsay knows more about it than me. It helps. And so uh, then also in the newsletter, if you don't have the newsletter or if you do have the newsletter, there is a online media release form, okay? This is nothing major. This is just, if you sign it for your family, that means Lindsay could take a picture of you at one of our public events, not at your home, but at one of our public events and post it to social media, okay? So uh, you're, you're always allowed to come back and say, hey, I hate that picture of me. Please take it down. And so, uh, but we, we just want to do that because we know there's certain situations where maybe uh, certain people, certain families don't want that online. And so we have an online media release form. Just go to our net newsletter for that. So if that's something that uh, you're looking for, go stop at the Connect Desk. If you're not sure how to sign up for the newsletter, that is the way to do it. So... All that being said, let me pray. We're going to pray for another local church. We try to do this every week. We pray for another local body of believers because we want to remind ourselves each and every week that there is not something special about this church in the sense that God is working throughout this city. There is something special about all of his church together. We are all of his church together are the apple of his eye. And so we try to pray for a church each week. And so this week we're going to be praying for Northland Christian Assembly Church, okay? So will you pray with me for Northland Christian Assembly? God, thank you. Uh, thank you for Northland Christian Assembly. Thank you for their heart for you, God. As Over the years, I've gotten to interact actually with uh, some, uh, some, some of the members of Northland Christian Assembly, and I just uh, love their passion and their fire for you, God. And I love how much they care about kids and even discipling kids into the way of Jesus was just uh, seemed to me from the outside looking in such an important thing. And so, God, today as they meet, I ask that that you would bless their time, that you would be uh, just clearly present to them, God. We know you're present, but sometimes it's not as clear to us. And so I pray that for them uh, that's clear this morning as they meet. God, I pray uh, that you would move in all sorts of ways, all the ways that those, that, that congregation, that family of God uh, is asking to move. I, I ask that you'd have mercy and move in those ways, God. And so thank you, God, for Northland Christian Assembly, and uh, thank you for our time together this morning as well. Amen. Okay, we are starting a new series today, and it's called The Beloved Community Is. And, and part of that, a part of why we're starting this new series today is because we want to communicate how this church transition that's been going on the last few months uh, has been going for us. So uh, I think most of you know, but if you're newer, you might not know, Redemption Arizona, which was 10 churches and it was a multi-congregational church, so it was one entity together, 
back in September, Redemption Arizona decided to, to split apart. And so the results of that is seven of the churches decided to start a redemption network, something new where they're their own independent churches and they're going to keep their name Redemption. One of the churches, Redemption Gateway, became Ironwood Church. And then us, along with Redemption Alhambra, decided to build something together. Uh, We said this when we first announced it back in September, but I I just want to say this again, uh, especially if it's new for you, but the elders here at our church and myself, we, we're, we're sad about how this came about. Uh, it's, it's sad to us. We loved Redemption Arizona. We loved this idea of trying to live out unity and oneness together, even in a difficult way across, that spanned the whole state. And so, so we're, we're sad. We're, and, and you might be going, well, you don't sound sad right now. It's because I'm numb, okay? I'm numb and dead inside after a year of talking about this with people. And so uh, <laughs> I think I fully grieved it is probably the better way to say it. Um, and and we, get, we get that there, were, there was various tensions that, were, that made sense uh, across the uh, congregations, across redemption that were needs that were important. And so, uh, but, but we were sad that our church family split apart. That being said, I am really personally excited to begin or already have been, already have begun, I should say, Partnering with Alhambra. Redemption Alhambra is a beautiful, wonderful church. If you're ever down in Phoenix, they're in the Alhambra neighborhood. I highly suggest going, checking out their church. There are few churches that embody the Beatitudes as fully as I think they do. They're just a beautiful, wonderful church. And so over the last few months, Redemption Flagstaff and Redemption Alhambra, we've, we've just gotten together a lot and tried to figure out what should we become. One of the things that brought us together and part of why we made the decision the way we made the the decision is because Alhambra and Flagstaff, we both love the multi-congregational model. We both love this idea of being knit together, even structurally and organizationally, because uh, we just loved what that did for us in living out this kind of, this unity that you see all throughout the New Testament. You especially see it in, in John 17, when Jesus' prayer for his church is, is that they would be one. And so, so we love this idea of different churches from different backgrounds and different contexts trying to live in unity with one another, on mission together, sharing resources together, sharing giftings with one another. Like, we love that idea. And so that's part of why we decided to go with Alhambra and do this. And so that being said, there are even more things than just that that we value together. Now, as we were going through this process... With all of Redemption Arizona, we began to realize that Alhambra and Flagstaff, there are a lot of things, a lot of commonalities that we have when it comes to what we value, how we value doing church, how we enjoy doing church. Things, uh, things like uh, living out the mission of God in a holistic way, uh, valuing the mission of God and, and work, like living for God in this word and deed mentality. Not just word, not just deed, but word and deed together. Uh, something else that Alhambra and Flagstaff both just valued a ton is seeing the church, the whole church, as the family of God. Like we see that as one of our primary identities as the church, is that we are the family of God together. Other things we care about, we care about justice, we care about care for the poor, we care about multi-ethnicity, and we even care about and respect like different church traditions. Like a lot of times churches box, them, box themselves into one tradition. We really like to go, hey, what, what is good from multiple different traditions? And so all, all those things, plus some of the multi-congregational stuff, like I said, is part of what brought us together. It's part of why we made the decision to go with Alhambra and and begin to build something new, make something new. And so so we've been working to figure that out. In the meantime, Redemption Alhambra, they have changed their name to Alhambra Beloved Community. All right? That's part of what this series is called. Uh, Alhambra Beloved Community. So that word beloved, if you're not familiar with that word beloved... It is this word that is used very powerfully throughout Scripture in a variety of ways. And that, and that term, beloved community, it's actually a term that was really made, made popular by black preaching of the 18th, 19th, and 20th centuries. 
and black preachers would use this term, beloved community, to talk about if, if the church, if the church realizes how beloved they are in God's eyes, what sort of community flows out from that? And so Martin Luther King Jr. in particular, he really popularized that term, the beloved community. A lot of Martin Luther King Jr.'s sermons, if you go back and listen to him, he's saying, here's what I think the beloved, oh, the beloved community should look like if we realize how beloved we are, how loved by God we are. So all that being said, one thing that Alhambra and Flagstaff, and there actually is a church that's going to be planted in South Phoenix that's been incubating in Alhambra, we decided that together what we're going to call ourselves is the beloved community, the beloved community. Sometimes you might hear say uh, the beloved community family of churches. Uh, we're still kind of working out the verbiage. As you can imagine, we're, we're slow to just make changes as fast as possible. We really want to make changes in the right way. And so even the verbiage over the next months might change. You, you know, you might be like, you said, you said it was the beloved community. I'm like, well, uh, that, cha- that verbiage might change based on what we think will serve all three congregations best. And so, so to be clear, we, Redemption Church Flagstaff, we are not going to change our name. We're going to keep our name for a variety of reasons. But now... We have embarked on this endeavor as a church to be part of the beloved community, a family of churches trying to live out oneness and mission together. So the series we're starting today is called The Beloved Community Is. And we're going to take seven weeks and we're going to look at some of these values that brought our churches together. We're not going to be able to cover all of the values, but we're going to try to cover a lot of the values that brought us together, things that we... As, as a church go, this is what we want to be about. These are the things we want to value. In fact, right now with, with Alhambra, we've been working on a document that just kind of explicitly states what our values are. And that's going through an editing process. And it's going to be probably even uh, more values than what we cover in this series. But our hope is in this series to give you a good glimpse into the things that brought us together as a church to kind of figure out, okay, how do we continue being in this family of churches, living on one, living on mission, having this kind of collective ecclesiology and makeup to to who we are. And so this whole series, The Beloved Community is, each week we're going to look at one thing that we are. I'm sorry, I don't know why that's happening, guys. I'll uh, try to straighten this wire or something. Um, Each week we're going to be looking at one of these values, one of these things that we think is crucial to who we are as a church. And so it's a chance for us to re-up and, and continue to pursue these things. I don't think any of these values should be really new to you guys. Like, I don't think there's going to be a week where I get up and we preach through something. You're like, wow, I didn't know you guys valued that. Unless you're new, maybe that could be the case. But I think most people that have been here for a while, when we say these things, you go, oh, wow, yeah, this, is all, this has always been a value for us. And now we have a chance with Alhambra and with South Phoenix to re-up, press into these values, think through these values more deeply, pursue these values more. And so, so that's a bit of an update of where we're at with Alhambra. I know we announced it back in September. We've been talking in members' meetings about how that's gone and what's going on with that. So that's a bit of a, an update for you guys there. We're still working on things. We're, we're, one of the big things we're working on is the, the legal structure of how this will all work out. How, that's uh, somewhat complicated, as you can imagine. We have multiple churches coming together trying to figure something out. And so we're just trying to figure out what is the best legal st- structure that will serve the churches and kind of live out that, that, that mission, that value of, of being this kind of collective body, this collective family of churches. So that's the beloved community, and that's the series we're going to be in over the next seven weeks, looking at what is the beloved community, what do we want to be, what do we aspire to be, what do we value, Okay. Um, another, just kind of a, a little random update, a, a bit unrelated but related, is this. I, uh, on May 26th, I'm going to take a sabbatical for 12 weeks. And uh, the reason for that is that nothing's wrong uh, besides everything's wrong. No, uh, nothing's wrong. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I told myself not to make that joke, but I couldn't help myself. Uh, nothing's wrong, but I just, I've had a hard few years, guys. Like, it's just been really hard. And uh, me and the elders are uh, worried about me emotionally. Just, it has been an emotionally really trying uh, few years. To give you a little glimpse of uh, the last 
since the end of 2019 for me. My, my dad was diagnosed with Alzheimer's, and he's declined. Uh, since then, noticeably, the church itself, it went through 2020 and COVID and everything that came with that. And that was really try, a trying time for any church in America, but it was also for us. Uh, over that period in 2020, I had to fire, I had to let go of one of my closest friends who was the lead pastor and I had to take over his role. That by itself has been one of the hardest things for me in my life ever. Uh, and then even in the midst of that, as I'm learning how to become a lead pastor, uh, there was just some of the toughest pastoral situations I've ever had to like deal with and be in, uh, stuff that, yeah, just really tough things that were emotionally tiring and draining as well. And then we get to this past year and all this re redemption transition stuff is happening. And so I just, uh, and it was just heartbreaking for me. I love Redemption Arizona. I love those nine other churches. And so it, it just, the elders, as we began, as we were going through that process, they just saw, and they're like, man, this is really heartbreaking. We're really worried about you, Anthony. We're worried if you don't get some rest, if you don't get some time to heal away from doing ministry, uh, we're just worried about what could happen to you emotionally uh, in all kinds of ways. And, and I said, I agree. I also am worried in those same ways. And so we just decided, hey, let's just decide for sure. I think we decided this back in the fall. For sure, this upcoming summer, I'm just going to take a sabbatical. Like, we're just, regardless of what's going on, regardless of what work needs to be done, I'm just going to take a sabbatical for 12 weeks. So um, I'm starting the sabbatical on May 26th. It will end uh, for me on Sunday, August 11th. So I'm basically going to be gone all summer. It's going to be, I think, a major blessing to me. While I'm gone, uh, a bunch of our local preachers will be preaching, but Aaron for, from Redemption Alhambra, I don't know why this is doing this, guys. I really apologize. Um, Redemption, uh, Aaron from Redemption Alhambra, he's going to come up and preach at least four different times as well. So that would be a great way to just get um, connected to Alhambra beloved community as well. And so I'll switch to this. Right. Sorry, bro. No, that's fine. What, do you want to just take it? Mm -hmm. right. um, Whoa. So it's going to be good. It's going to be restful for me. But we just wanted to let you guys know about that sabbatical in advance, uh, just so you know why. why. Why is Anthony taking a sabbatical when it is? We, we, we've, the advice we've been given is it's good to let people know as far in advance as you can know, just so they're not wondering or filling in the blanks. There's no, like, secret thing going on besides that I, I'm crying a lot. And so, like, it's just like it's been a sad four years, you know, and I just need some rest. And I need a break. And I think uh, stopping and not doing ministry for a number of weeks will be really good for me. And so, uh, so, so yeah, that's, that's that. So all that being said, uh, we're going to pray, and then I'm just going to tell you uh, where we're going today in the, in the sermon. So will you guys pray with me for this message? We pray for beloved uh, community, the beloved community, and, um, and even... Yeah, just pray as you think of it for me in this upcoming sabbatical that, that will be, I think, good for my soul. So, God, uh, thank you uh, for this church. Thank you for this body. I think one thing I've realized over the last number of years here, even in the midst of just kind of trying times in ministry, is that this church has just become more and more of a joy to me, which is just surprising, God, that this, uh, that in the midst of these hard seasons, uh, emotionally, God, for me, and, and all, whatever other kinds of ways, God, that, that it's not been this body of believers that have been trying for me, God. It's, they've really been a, nothing but a blessing for me. And so, God, just thank you that you've surrounded me with this family of believers. Um, God, I pray today as we talk through what it means to be the beloved community, I pray that we just kind of catch the vision. I think uh, I pray that we see how these are things we value, but maybe there are ways we need to dive more deeply into this, God. I pray that even now that you begin to form our, our church relationship with Alhambra and South Phoenix and that it's something that is, is all the sorts of things that you want it to be, God. And I pray that somehow that this sermon helps us to, to see that, to know that, to understand that. And so, 
God, thank you so much. God, we pray for my upcoming sabbatical. We pray that's restful. We pray that I find healing. We pray that, um, that even, God, you point me to the right resources and counseling and therapies and intensives and uh, even spiritual growth opportunities, God, on the way to that and maybe even during that, God, uh, to, to help me um, uh, heal in the ways that I need to find my rest in you in the ways I need to um, and bring, bring all of my pain to you the way, ways that I need to. So, God, we, we love you and we need you. Amen. All right, so uh, a so few updates. Hopefully that helps you guys kind of know what's going on. And, and I, I, we announced it back in September. It's probably like, what's been going on? Well, we've just been talking and trying to make sure that we, we do this thing right and, and we don't do it too quickly. And, 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 and also, like, uphold this thing uh, called the church family. And what's cool is Alhambra started this, this series that we're in today. They started back in January, and we are, we're hopping on in February. And then most of the rest of this series will be pretty similar to Alhambra. We'll, come, we'll be back on that kind of schedule where our family of churches is going to be preaching through the same things together. So I'm really excited about that. So, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to look today at how the beloved community churches are connected to that word Beloved. Why is that word beloved so important to us? Why are we using that word beloved? And so we're going to look at three things, three things specifically today in, in how we uh, are connected to that word beloved. And so the first thing that we're going to look at is belovedness in the Trinity. The second thing we're going to look at is belovedness in our identity. And then the third thing we're going to see is how all of that forms us into a beloved community. Okay, so let me start. I'm going to start by reading Matthew 16 and 17. The words will be on the screen, but follow along. I'm using the CSB, which should be the Bible's out by the doors. But, but this is uh, the end of Jesus' baptism. This is how it plays out. Verse 16. When Jesus was baptized, he went up immediately from the water. The heavens suddenly opened for him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and coming down on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. So Matthew 3, and really all of the Gospels that talk through the baptism of Jesus, it's this really astounding passage in Scripture Because we get to see how the triune God, Father, Son, and Spirit, relate to one another. So so what we just read, Jesus is baptized, he comes up out of the water, the Spirit descends on Jesus, and then the Father says, this is my beloved Son with whom I am well pleased. This, This is a huge moment in Scripture. If you don't know this, we we as Christians, we believe that God has revealed himself as a trinity. One God in three persons. Not three separate gods, but one God in three persons. And don't think about it too much or your, your brain will just start melting. Right? This is part of why I believe the trinity is because I just don't think a human would make it up on purpose. Like, they, they just want it. But if God is revealing himself as a trinity, that's why we see the trinity all over scripture. And so we have one God and three persons. And in this scene, we get a glimpse of how those three persons, the Father, the Son, and the Spirit, interact with one another. We, we see it's full of love. It's full of belovedness. The Spirit descends on Jesus, empowering Jesus, blessing Jesus, honoring Jesus. And I would even say he's glorifying Jesus. And then the Father, after the Spirit descends, he, he says for all to hear, this is my Son in whom I'm well pleased. Before Jesus did anything in his ministry, God the Father is saying, this is my Son who I love so much. And in the CSB and in many translations, we see the use of that word beloved. This is my beloved son. Just this word packed with with deep love and affection. And we see by, by, 
the Father's use of that word, how deep the Father's love is for his Son, how deep his affection is for his Son. Uh, Tim Keller, he talks about, Tim Keller is a, uh, a former pastor. He died uh, this past year in New, from New York City. And he talks about how with, within the Trinity, within the Godhead, there is this divine dance happening. And it's a dance of love. And it's a dance of belovedness. All three persons in the Trinity, they look to glorify and honor and love the other persons in the Trinity. And in this moment, with the baptism scene, we see that happening. We see the Father and the Spirit pouring out love on Jesus. And you can see other places in Scripture where it switches up and goes towards the Father, goes towards the Spirit. Within God himself, there is this divine dance of belovedness going on. Each person finding ways to love and honor the other persons. Keller, he, he has, I think, one of the most beautiful articulations of the Trinity that I've ever heard. I posted it on Facebook this week, and, and only two people liked it. But um, I know it's, no one uses Facebook. But, but uh, if you want to go listen to that sermon, and, I, and the reason I reference that is because anything good I say about the Trinity today, is, I'm probably paraphrasing from Keller and he's paraphrasing from C.S. Lewis. So it's all kind of plagiarism happening together. All right? I just want to give credit where credit's due. You're like, man, Anthony, that was really good. I didn't say it. I'm just paraphrasing. Uh, but he has this beautiful articulation of that idea of the Trinity. One God and three persons, and within the Trinity, within the Godhead, there is this love. There's this deference to one another. There's this honoring of one another. There's this encircling of one another. There's this divine dance happening between the persons of the Trinity. And Keller, in that sermon, he uses these quotes from C.S. Lewis and Cornelius Plantiga that, that talks about this idea. Look what Lewis says. In Christianity, God is not an impersonal, impersonal thing or a static thing. He's not even just one person, but a dynamic, pulsating activity, a life, a drama, almost, if you will not think me irreverent, a kind of dance. And then Cornelius Plantiga, he says this, See, the Bible says that the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit glorify one another. That means that the persons within God exalt, commune with, and defer to one another. Each harbors the others at the center of his being. In constant movement of overture and acceptance, each person envelops and encircles the others. God's interior life, therefore, overflows with self-giving love for others. This is what we're seeing at the baptism of Jesus. Within God, a divine community of belovedness is happening. A beloved community, if you will. And here's what's astounding. Is God has the, that same sort of beloved love that is shared between the Father, the Son, and the Spirit that same sort of beloved love, God has that for his people. He, and further, part of Jesus' work in the world is to bring that identity of his own belovedness, to bring it to any who trust and follow him. He wants to give that identity of being beloved, of belovedness to any and all who trust and follow Jesus. And God has this sort of love for his people. It's really astounding. If you look at Deuteronomy and Jeremiah, God at different points refers to his people as his beloved. And then all throughout the Old Testament, there's this image, this metaphor that, that God uses to communicate what his love is like for his people. He often says, I am the groom and you are the bride. You are my beloved bride. This imagery of a, a husband and a wife and the way that God uses it, it would have had such deep ties to this word beloved, this idea of being beloved. 
And so all throughout the Old Testament, that's how we see God using that word. And then Jesus enters the scene, and he shows that he's doing this work as the beloved son of God to share that identity with any and all that trust and follow him. And this took such deep root that the early church leaders would use this term to describe the church. So if you go to 2 Peter 3.8, Peter's talking to the church. He could use all sorts of terms and metaphors that the church uses throughout the New Testament to refer to itself. Even the word church is one of those words that's used. But at one point in 2 Peter 3, chapter, eight, or chapter 3, verse 8, Peter says, beloved. He calls the whole church beloved, and he means God's beloved, but Peter probably also in a sense like his beloved because of his deep love for the church. If you go to Revelation, one of the ways that the city that God brings to earth is referred to as that beloved city, his beloved city, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Because part of that imagery of God bringing the, the holy city down, the new Jerusalem down, is the image of God bringing his people down from all history past. And the way that God views his people is as his beloved city. So that means, church, one of the most fundamental parts of your identity and my identity in Christ is the fact that we are God's beloved. God loves you. You are his beloved, and he is your beloved if we're, if we're stepping into this dance that's happening within the Trinity. The Father, through Jesus and the Spirit, have, have worked that beloved identity into us through the cross and the resurrection. We are beloved. This is a huge part of our identity. I wish we could just understand how deeply we are beloved. I wish I could. Like, I wish I, I could just know how beloved I am by God. I, I wish I knew my belovedness in Christ as well, if not better, than I know my own name or my own face. Because I think that's how crucial this identity of being beloved is to our faith and to our life. I think that's where we're really going to find our strength and joy and security. It's so crucial for us to understand this identity. There's this, so, so two truths, two big truths so far. I went through my first two points there. Truth number one, God himself is a divine dance of belovedness. He, he himself is one God, yet a beloved community, if you will. And then the second truth is this. He shares that belovedness with us. We are his beloved. So what does that all mean? I think it means this. I think he's inviting us into that same dance with the whole of our lives. I think he's inviting us to live as the beloved community. Here's more from that, that same C.S. Lewis quote that I read from earlier. And, and this is C.S. Lewis commenting on why this divine Trinitarian dance metaphor matters. Here's what he says. So what does it all matter? It matters more than anything else in the world for the whole dance or drama or pattern of this three personal life is to be played out in each of us. They, the Father, Son, and Spirit, are the great fountain of energy and beauty spurting up at the center of reality and there is no other way to the happiness for which we have been made. So, if, if the fiber of reality was made by a triune, self-giving God of love in a dance, that means when he gives us that love, we're invited into that same dance of love and belovedness. 
that, that we're, we're invited to live out that dance of beloved, belovedness with God himself, but we're also invited to, to live out that dance of belovedness with others. You were created by love, with love, and for love. You and I were created to be the beloved community, a community that, that, that understands our central characteristic should be love, love of God and love of others, a community that understands that because God has made us his beloved, that means there is this divine union of belovedness between all of us who trust in Jesus. He's made us family. That is a core part of who we are. God is inviting us into the dance of being a beloved. So that means you and I, we have to go and figure out with all, with all of our lives how to love one another, to defer to one another, to count others as more important than ourselves, and to seek love for everybody. Because we are now part of this divine dance of belovedness. It's part of our identity. And if it's part of our identity, if it's self-giving love, if it's love that looks to love others like the triune God does within himself, that means our love cannot stay static within ourselves. Too often, I think that's what happens. We let the love of God just stay static in us instead of realizing it should produce something in us. It should cause us to think, what does it mean for me to live out my belovedness toward the world? That's what I think a true centering on God's love should do for us. Just like I, I said, I wish, I wish I could just know how deeply I'm, Part of my, that a core part of my identity is being beloved by God. I wish that for us. Like if, if I could just make that so, make it so that we could all know just how beloved by God we are, I think we would see a, just a radically loving body of believers in astounding ways. I think I already see that in lots of ways, but I think if that was so firm in our identity, I think we'd be amazed how living out love becomes easier, how living out love becomes just second nature to us. And so our attempt as as a family of churches now with Alhambra and South Phoenix will be to live out this identity as the beloved community, centered on God's love, loving others the way God loves us, seeing how he has made us into one family, one beloved community. And so the rest of the series, we're going to look at some of those core things. How do we live out our belovedness? Uh, some of those things that we value as the beloved community. If we're going to accept the invitation to the dance of belovedness that God has given us. But for today, what my big hope is that we are just reminded of how beloved we are. Amen, church? Amen. Let's pray. God, thank you for your word. Thank you for using big words like beloved to explain your love to us, God. Thank you for using big metaphors connected to belovedness all throughout scripture to show us just how loved we are. God, I pray that uh, as we are transitioning, in a sense, uh, God, into this beloved community. I pray that, that we're led by you in all of it, that we are centered by you, that we accept the invitation to be part of this dance of belovedness, God. Yeah, I pray for us in the room. I think there's some of us probably that have a hard time connecting with that part of our identity, uh, have a hard time believing it. God, I don't know what you want to do with your spirit. I don't know how you do it, God. I think you do it in a hundred different ways. But I just pray for each person in this room that has a hard time connecting with their identity of being beloved, I ask that you would just give them a little grace, a little mercy this morning, tangible in some kind of way, so that they understand that more. And then let them notice it and remember it and not forget it once they leave 
here. God, help us to be the beloved community. Help us to live that out well. I think it's going to take centering our whole identities on you, God, and your love and all of that means. So God, please uh, help us with that over this series. I pray for the rest of this series, God, that as we talk about these other values of ours, that they would be things that uh, go deep down into our bones as a church. God, we, we love you and we need you. Amen. All right. We're going to move into a time of reflection. If you're new, we every almost every week after the sermon, we just take two or three minutes to just reflect on, on God's word. What, what is God teaching us from his word? We, you can spend that time just praying. You can spend that time thinking. You can spend that time journaling. Uh, whatever, however that looks for you, uh, just take time to reflect on God and who he is. And then in a few minutes, Pastor Kyle will be up to lead us into our response time. So go ahead, take two to three minutes and reflect. Would you please join me as we enter our time of response? Every Sunday, we hold this space to respond to God. After we hear from the scriptures, hear the word of God, we want to respond. And we do this in three ways. The first is we take communion together. Uh, before Jesus gave his life on the cross, he held up the bread and he broke it and saying, give thanks for this is my body. So as you take the cracker and you receive it just remember that Christ's body was given for us and then he holds up the wine and he gives thanks for his blood the same with the juice or the wine it reminds us that his body broken his blood spilled so we can be called his beloved the beloved children the beloved family of God and so we're reminded through communion that he's given his life and resurrection for us and so the second thing we do is we worship, we sing, we praise God, uh, we give him what he's due uh, with our voices and we stand and we sing. And finally, we have a uh, space for giving, giving. And just a heads up, I know over the past few weeks, some people have told me that if you give online, it hasn't been working, it has been fixed. Somehow it was del our link was deleted. We have no idea why or how, but if you give online, thank you so much. It does work now. Um, 
and thank you for being such a generous church. If you have cash, check, or change, we have offering boxes in the back. Um, so would you please stand? If you're serving communion, would you please come forward and prepare? And then once the communion servers are ready, everyone else go ahead and line up and receive communion. Jesus is mine He's been my fourth man in the fire time after time Born of His Spirit Washed in His blood And what He did for Trust in God, my Savior, the one who will never fail. He will never fail. Perfect submission. at rest I know the author of tomorrow is ordered my steps so this is my story and this is my song I'm praising my risen King and Savior Yeah. 
answered, I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered, I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered, that's why I trust him, that's why I trust him, I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered, I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered, I sought the
is no more. Christ is the Lord's. Oh, this is our.
You're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let. You're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let. You're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let. You're never gonna. Let seat for some announcements. Hey, first, let's thank the sound team. It's hard. So even when my mic's up, man, it's like one of the most, it is probably the most technical job on the Sundays, and we make them every single week reset everything up. I don't know. We don't own this building, if you didn't know that. And so uh, because of that mobile nature, it's tough, and there's a lot of things. But uh, so anyways, be sure to thank sound team people when you see them. And I'm always thankful for Curtis, who will willing to come on stage and be like, hey, use a better mic. Um, so, uh, so the, hey, that being said, a few announcements. First announcement is this, is get connected. There's a connect desk out there. There's a way to get onto the newsletter. But we also have at the end of this month, the last Sunday of this month, a Roots lunch coming up. Now, we don't do the Roots lunch every month like we used to. So this is going to be the last Roots, month for a, a Roots lunch for a little while. And so if you're looking to get connected to our church, if you're newer to our church, if maybe you even just haven't really gotten connected or like assimilated into our church before, stop by, do the Roots lunch, sign up for the Roots lunch. It's on the last Sunday of this month. This is a great way to just hear how do we do church as a church family? What are the things that we're going to emphasize and prioritize and, and work through together? And we even like to try to disciple people into our church because being part of a new local church can be a lot sometimes. And so if you are looking to get connected, stop by the Connect Desk, sign up for a Roots Lunch because this will probably be the last Roots Lunch we do for a little while because we kind of want to do them more in the rhythms of when people tend to uh, get connected to a church. And so uh, be thinking through that. Secondly, uh, we have Second Saturday coming up. So it will be this upcoming Saturday, Second Saturday. Yeah, give it up to Sherry Williams who leads Second Saturday. <laughs> Second Saturday is, if you don't know, is where we partner once a month with a different local organization that we think is doing good work. We tend to partner with the same four, five, six, it depends on the year, organizations doing uh, similar work every time we're with them because we want to build those relationships with people in the city who are doing good work, making the world a better place. And so uh, it's a great opportunity for us as a church to be a blessing. Something about that Roots Lunch, one of the questions we ask in that Roots Lunch is like, what is something you want out of the community? And almost always, Everybody says, I want to be able to serve. I want to have opportunities to serve. So we as a church have all these opportunities to serve, second Saturday being one of them. And if you don't sign up, then you're a bunch of hypocritical liars. And so I'm only kidding, but think about that. And so 
And so uh, sign up. There, I think there's a second Saturday table out there today. Sign up for second Saturday. Get involved. This, every second Saturday, they work hard to make sure there's opportunities for whole families with, with kiddos and non-families to serve as well or without kiddos, that is. And so feel free. Uh, there's two different options this upcoming second Saturday. And so stop by the second Saturday uh, desk. Sign up for second Saturday. This is something I really would love for our whole church to try to be a part of as much as they can, okay? Uh, last announcement is this, is we, once a month, we try to make sure our prayer teams are up here. So uh, this month, uh, we have Lindsay and Jackson. They're going to be up here after the service to pray with you about anything that you need prayer for. We think prayer is important, and we think praying together is important. And sometimes, uh, well, essentially, we just want to give you the opportunity to go up, ask for prayer if you need prayer. I think our church tends to act like... Uh, going up for prayer is maybe worse than the second greeting time. And so I would just encourage you guys to go up, ask for prayer. This is like a great, beautiful time with your brother or sister in Christ to just pray through something that you need prayer for. I would just really encourage that. So with all that being said, let me pray a blessing and a benediction over us. God, may we see how beloved we are. May we really desire to live out as a beloved community, God. I pray that as we... As we uh, dive into the series, looking at different things we value, different things that brought us and Alhambra and South Phoenix together, I pray that this series just really uh, unites us in a missional way. But more than that, God, I pray that we are hearing from you through your word and living out those things faithfully. And so, God, I pray that we go into our weeks understanding a bit more deeply how beloved we are and letting that be the part, a crucial core part of our identity. God, we love you and we need you. Amen. All right, we'll see you next week as we continue the Beloved Community Is series.